Good morning and welcome to Black Petal Gardening. My name is Sia. If this is the first time you're watching one of our videos, I am in Oregon, which is zone 8B, at least for the area that I'm in. I am just outside of Portland. Um, today, we are going to go over some of the seeds that I've purchased for this growing season. And um, this is not going to be the entirety of what I'm planning on planting. I absolutely expect to purchase some starts, particularly uh, for peppers, maybe a couple for uh, tomatoes as well. And then, of course, depending on what kind of wiggle room I have as far as space is concerned, if there's something else that strikes um, our fancy while we're at you know, the garden center or whatever, we're gonna leave things open for um, some unexpected or unplanned items as well. So let's get started. Now for this particular um, purchase, I have things from Gurney as well as Baker Street. And I, never purchased from Baker Street before. Gurney, in the past, I have purchased from them. Um, I think they're very similar to Burpees, maybe even the same company. I don't know. When we get <laughs> cat, you know, the catalogs, it sure seems like a lot of them are very similar. But anyway, the first items that I have here are um, some snap peas. It's a little loud. And this is Sugar Anne. This is Sugar Magnolia. Last year we did do shelling peas and, and that was great. Uh, it was very, um, it was nice to be able to go into our freezer and grab some peas to put into like tuna no casserole or into pot pie and to know that we actually grew those rather than them just being frozen peas that we purchased from the store. Um, honestly, I don't have any problems with, you know, frozen vegetables from the store, but there's just a little something uh, heartwarming or nice to know that this was um, a product that you brought into being with your hard work and a lot of help from Mother Nature. So this year I'm expecting I'll do uh, one of each in this early spring. These are recommended to be direct sowed rather than um, putting seedlings and, and getting them started indoors. So probably towards the end of March is when I'll do that, maybe mid-March, end of March. Um, along the around the same time that I plan to do my onion sets and um, I haven't decided whether I want to do a succession sowing that's you know a month or two apart or wait until the end of August maybe end of July depending on how much time maturity wise they need and and do a fall crop um, this version has a 56 day mat maturity, this one 80, uh, 69, 68 to 70. I am reading these upside down. So, <laughs> uh, so depending on the amount of time, that's obviously going to impact when we would want to get the next group into the ground if we go with a fall um, crop versus um, a little bit later into the spring slash summer season. Okay. Now the next item, we have some beans and though I didn't want to do shelling peas, um, I did grab these shell beans. Uh, it's called Tiger's Eye. Uh, Scott was kind of intrigued with the idea of these. They say that they would be good for chili soup and refried beans. We've never made refried beans, so, you know, that would be something new for us to give a good. This will be something new. Now, Blue Lake Bush beans um, are ones that we have planted previously, and they did very well. Um, I will say that when we did the beans last year, we did them in our raised bed for the spring summer season. I did try to do a fall 
sewing and I think I waited too long to get them started um, because the, the plants grew up a couple of them ended up with some flowers but they never actually beaned out they never gave us any any beans and I think it's because it had gotten too cold by then so I do have plans to do these beans um, we've got purple TP here and Kalima these two I've never done before I plan on doing these in the green stock and I'm hopeful that that will be successful even though when I did the fall one that was in the green stock, I don't think it was where I did where I planted them so much as the timing. And I want to do a lot of these um, because I really want to do some dilled beans using my grandpa's recipe. But regardless, um, I do want to make sure that we have a lot of beans so that we can do our dilled beans and hot dilled beans, as well as have some for um, freezing to use, you know, later on. So we'll see how that goes. All right. Now, next we have, oops. Oh, actually, my stuff is a little bit all over the place here. We have peppers. Now, I don't really have a history. Uh -uh course not of doing seed peppers from seeds in the years that we've lived here all of our growing has been basically by via starts I I'm trying to think I don't think we've ever done any vegetable seed growing and especially not seed starts uh, I mean sorry not um, seed propagation you know doing indoor seeds and then getting them ready and putting them out so um so yeah so this will be the first year that we do any kind of peppers from seeds the sugar rush peach i had seen these um used and mentioned on a couple of youtube channels and for the life of me i cannot remember which ones they were so i can't you know give them credit for bringing them to my attention uh, the detail peppers, these were free with our order. Uh, no frame of reference for those either. Um, but Scott really enjoyed the shishito peppers that we had last year. There was a yellow pepper, but I can't remember what the name of it was. Um, and that one did pretty good. And both of those we put in the green stock. So I'm hemming and hawing on whether I want to do more peppers in the green stock or not, or keep it simply to the raised bed and put them in like with the tomatoes or something. Uh, we'll have to see. But the vast majority, because we do want some jalapenos and um, a few other different kinds of, of pepper varieties, we're going to go with starts for those most likely. Uh, so this these will be our experiment with growing from seed as far as peppers are concerned. Um, Scott does like to do salsa and um, we have done a little bit of drying peppers and then, you know, kind of breaking them up to use and sprinkle into foods and, that, and that's gone fine. Um, yeah, I don't know. He might use some to ferment. He might use some uh, for pickling. We'll, we'll see. Um, but that's kind of the plan for now. And I'm very excited to see how these turn out. Now the next item we have are tomatoes. And I actually probably went a little bit overboard on the tomato purchase. Black Beauty is the one that I'm really, really excited about right now. I've never done a black tomato. Um, so the, the vision of it on the vine, I think it'll be really beautiful. I'm hoping that it'll actually uh, germinate and that it'll grow well and healthily and we'll have something worth um, harvesting and showing off. So I'm very excited about those. 
Um, the other one that I was excited about are these Brad's Atomic Grape. Um, a little less excited about them now. I was reading after I had purchased these, after I'd ordered, and I found that people were saying that this beautiful coloration, which is definitely what drew me in for these, is really not as intense or not as um, impressive in person as they have in the photos. And of course I know that they do enhancements on photos, but you know, I was kind of hoping that the, this coloration would, would stay, be fairly true. Um, other folks had said that the tomatoes themselves were actually kind of bland. So that's kind of a, a double disappointment. Um, we'll have to see, obviously, A, if they germinate and, you know, what they do once they're in the ground. Uh, but I was definitely disappointed to um, read about other people's experiences with these. And um, so I'm dialing back my expectations on, on these ones. Uh, we have Annan's Noir, which look very pretty as well as the black strawberry. Um, I did see these spoon tomatoes in the catalog and I was tempted to get them, but I decided against it. So I'm very glad that I ended up getting them as free as a free seed with my order. Um, so this is some of the tomatoes that we're going to do. I'm definitely going to get a purple Cherokee start that actually did pretty darn well in our garden last year. Um, I've had trouble with non-heirlooms, you know, like the beef steaks and the big, what do, what do they call them, like big girl early and stuff like that. I don't know what it is I'm doing wrong. The only thing I can figure is maybe not enough fertilizer, not the right fertilizer. I'm not sure, um, but they have not been very prolific for us. And if we do get tomatoes, they're not very big, even when they're supposed to be a, you know, beef steak or beef eater, you know, big variety that that doesn't manifest. Um, possibly it's because I tend to in the past have started them too early. So this year I'm not going to start any tomatoes, um, from starts into our garden until probably the end of April, maybe even beginning of May. Obviously I want to start the seeds before then so that they'll be ready around that time to go into the ground. But uh, maybe that'll be the key to some better success with those. Um, I don't think I'm going to do any other seeds. And frankly, this is a lot. Um, I'm probably, because we are going to do these via seed starts, I'll probably do two of each. I may need to do more just to make sure we actually have something to plant. And um, if we do end up with, you know, multiple healthy, I don't want to have, you know, three, four, three or four of each of these to go in the ground. Um, maybe two at the most just to hedge our bets against any damage or bugs, you know, that, that causes a problem because it's just Scott and I. So there's just two of us to eat what we do harvest. And, um, and while I could conceivably, you know, offer them all up to family, um, my local family is not super close. So it would be a bit of a drive to get out there, um, just to drop off produce. And unfortunately, <laughs> because they did close the office down where I work, um, and we're now all work from home. I don't have the opportunity to just bring some into work and be like, here, have at it. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how this turns out. It may be that as far as production and volume of, of fruits, um, I'm not going to have to worry because it won't go grow very well, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we did can some tomato sauce, um, last year. And so, you know, we do have some options if we have too many fresh tomatoes to use for, you know, just eating or cooking right at that time. So nothing will go to waste. At least that's the plan, but I want to be careful that I don't put us in a position where we have just 
a ridiculous amount of volume for the number of people who are actually living here. I will say um, that our dogs do like cherry tomatoes. Uh, so um, I usually get some sun golds and I may do that again this year. And we had really good luck with Juliet, which I believe is a type of Roma. And there was one other Roma. I would have to see if I can find the, um, the little tab thing that had the name on it. I think I have it somewhere, but they were very prolific too. So I, I want to get both of those again um, because they were a very nice size, um, not too large. They were kind of a petite Roma and they, they were very prolific. So anyway, that's the um, tomato section. Okay, so the next one, these are cucumbers. These I bought purely for novelty purposes. I have never grown either of these varieties. This is a Mexican sour gherkin, and this is called Dragon's Egg. Um, this one, it, it's cute. It is, <laughs> you know, very cute and petite. Um, it does say it's good for pickling. I haven't decided if I want to do pickles again this year, other than, you know, our dilled beans, because we have pickles from when I did pickle, um, pickling, oh gosh, it's been a number of years now, um, since I did my last, my last one, and I'm the one that absolutely adores pickles, Scott will eat them here and there, but I love pickles, and I haven't been eating them very, um, regularly, so again, no sense in doing more pickles if we're not getting through the ones that we already have, um, so yeah, this one, the photo that I saw, they looked a little bit paler than this, and just the idea of seeing these hanging on the vine, little white eggs, um, really tickled my fancy, and so I absolutely wanted to give these a go. So I'm really hoping that these turn out. I'll probably only do one of each, two, two to do starts, just to make sure that I have something to put in the ground, but probably only one actual plant. Um, is the goal because I don't, you know, obviously want to go too overboard. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful, especially these ones. Okay. And then we have our squash. And oops. So um, we've got a summer squash hybrid gentry and a winter squash black bellota hybrid and some zucchini. This one's called Black Beauty. We do like zucchini. Um, the dogs like zucchini. So my idea is to do a fair amount of stuff. We really like zoodles. Um, we could cut it up and freeze it. We can try and make dog treats out of some of it because generally zucchini tends to be fairly productive. Um, I've never made zucchini bread, so that would be on the table as well. I am not a huge fan of squash to eat. Um, you know, spaghetti squash, acorn squash, ugh, they, they just taste nasty to me. But Scott likes squash, so I, I got these for him. I anticipate we'll only do one of each variety, um, and maybe... <laughs> Maybe we'll be able to dump some onto my mom who does like squash and I think one of my sisters likes squash uh, in, the, in the future. Though I did offer to share my seeds with my mom so she may decide she just wants to um, grow some herself. In which case we will have to take advantage of the ability to store squash long term as long as it's in a cool and dark area. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, maybe I'll find that something about these squash doesn't taste yucky to me and I'll be able to help Scott eat them, but we'll see. All right. So, um... Brussels sprouts. This is called Radarling Hybrid. Scott really likes Brussels sprouts. Not me. They are disgusting. So 
got these for him. He he actually was kind of hemming and hawing on whether he wanted to do Brussels sprouts. Two years ago we did them uh, and we did them from start and no research, whatever. We were like, oh, Scott likes Brussels sprouts, let's grab some and we'll put them in. We did not realize how long they take to actually mature and be ready for harvest. And we can see for these, it's 140 to 145 days. So it took forever to, for them to be ready. Um, and it was they were a little disappointing. I think we were harvesting them in like November or December. Um, but the sprouts themselves weren't very big. Definitely not what you see at the grocery store. And they some of them were infested with aphids so um, we're definitely going to have to get some bait plants out. Um, nasturtiums are ones that I've read up on as being good for uh, aphids and I, I don't know if the small size was because we didn't do proper um, fertilization or the watering wasn't as as good as it needed to be or or what I don't, I'm not sure why they were smaller or if that's just the way that particular variety is but hopefully these ones will um, do better they are a purple sprout uh, so that's one of the reasons why Scott was like okay well let's give these a go because they would be something a little bit different and then We have our lettuce and cabbage situation. Um, so last year we did a decent, a decent with our leaf lettuce and we did those in the green stock and I plan on doing them in the green stock again. Um, so that's gonna be the leaf lettuce green ice and I think we still have some uh, seeds from last year that are still viable I'll have to look and see if they we actually truly do have lettuce ones that are left um, those will definitely be a succession so you know maybe two three um, uh, two or two or three week um, break between plantings um, yeah, we'll have to, those ones uh, we did do in the fall, and those ones were first from seed, and those did actually okay. So I don't know if we will do seed starting for these or if we'll direct sow them in the green stock. That's, that's still a little bit up in the air. Um, this one is a head lettuce, butter crunch. I've never done a head lettuce before, um, so my thought is this one will do in the raised bed and the reason why is last year in the fall we did from seed some cabbage it wasn't this variety which is paddock hybrid um, and I really wasn't sure if they were going to succeed or not but in the end we we did get some cabbages and they were like this big they were super adorable um, but I don't know if they were that small because we of the timing that we planted them and so they didn't have enough time to uh, size up before it got too cold if it was because we did them in the green stock and they didn't feel they had the room to expand to a full head size you know a normal head size um, if it was a situation that nutrients and things like that so um for both of these, I plan on putting them in the raised beds. Now for this guy, this is Little Jim, these tiny little roaming looking heads, these will be in the green stock as well, super cute, and that is 100% the only reason why I bought them is because they looked really adorable. So we'll see how, how those go. Okay. Few last few here. All right, so this strawberry spinach, another novelty purchase. Um, I'm not a big spinach fan. I'm okay with it raw in you know salads, but cooked, it's ugh, disgusting. These ones, I was really 
intrigued by because they have these red berries and they say that those are good in salads. However, when I was reading the description in the catalog, they mentioned, you know, not eating a ton of them at one time um, because there could be some concerns about toxicity. So at the time, you know, I was like, oh, okay, that's fine whatever I still want to give them a go because they, they are a novelty but now I'm kind of like maybe this was a poor purchase <laughs> um, I definitely don't want these to spread this will likely be the one and only year that I put them in the ground um, so yeah we'll we'll see that may have been poor poor choices right there um, celery I've always wanted to do celery but never have so I'm hopeful that this turns out um, I do like it for, you know, putting into soups and, and other meals. I like it raw, you know, with cream cheese or, or peanut butter. Um, but I really want to make celery salt. And I don't know if that would just be me getting this dried and crumbled up and mixing it with, you know, salt crystals. Or if celery has a natural saltiness and you can just dry it and crumble it and then that's it. You don't actually have to add salt to it for, for your seasoning. Um, I remember watching something on Epic Gardening and they had said, you know, when they were tasting one of their celery that it tasted salty. So, you know, if it already has a natural salt flavor, maybe we wouldn't need to mix it with additional salt uh, to get to where we want it want to be. Um, ground cherries, this is... Uh, well, Aunt Molly's. I don't know if we will plant these beyond this year. I've never tried growing them. I've never tried eating them. And when I have looked around online for information about them, there's definitely been two very vocal sides. One saying that they're terrible and not worth the time and not really very good. Others who absolutely adore them. I'm hesitant about these because you are supposed to wait for them to fall onto the ground before you harvest them. And I really, really do not want to put myself in a position where I might have volunteers later. So I think I'll either put them in a container or in the raised beds rather than doing... Um, like the green stalks. If I do them in the raised beds, then when they fall, there's the possibility that they'll just fall, you know, on the outside of the bed. And since that's going to eventually have wood chips and it has um, yard fabric underneath, there'd be a less likelihood of them being able to spread and, and seed themselves. So there's that. And then last but not least, we have these gorgeous purple dragon carrots. I this is another one of my, I really, really hope that these turn out well. The be they're beautiful. Oh my God, jeweled tones. And again, pulled in by the photo. I know that they probably enhance them. So I need to be careful with my expectations, but I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that they'll have similar coloration. Um, the catalog did say that they had a good flavor. And so very much looking forward to getting those into the ground and hoping that they will do well. Now I will say last year I did pretty darn well with my carrots because I bought some that were in a seed tape. And one of the problems I've had in the past is, you know, you're sprinkling your seeds and you have to thin them later. Well, that, that step I'm, I'm not super fond of. And so that was a avoided with the seed tape because they have them you know in intervals so the spacing is already there and what's also nice about it is it's in a tape it's kind of a kind of like a paper towel um type of consistency for the for the tape that they're they're um, smashed between so you can see it really easily on the ground and then you can make sure that you're covering it properly and things like that. Hey kitty. Cats over here. Um, wanting some affection. Okay, claws out. Thank you. Um, so I do plan on doing the seed tape again. It looked like the seeds for that were okay. 
um, and didn't get damaged by water and everything. If they did, then because I had good succession with those, a su success, not succession, um, I'll probably go and buy some more. So yeah, I, I personally very much recommend if you can get a variety that you like in a seed tape, it made my life much easier in dealing with them later. Okay, kitty. That, that box is empty, so you are going to take a tumble. They never listen. Okay, so that right there is the last of the seeds that I have um, purchased. And I'm going to just kind of lay out. Yeah, you're about to fall. Well, that's what happens when you don't listen, bud. We just got our Chewy order, so we have a whole bunch of empty Chewy boxes um, that we need to break down. And we're actually going to take those, break them down, and put them as part of the layer uh, in our raised beds, since they are the taller ones and we definitely need as much um, stuff to fill them as possible, so it's not just dirt that we're putting in, you know, the whole Hugel culture, um, process. <sighs> yeah, so that's a bit of an, of an adventure. Uh, we do have a video that is, um, I guess I'll put this over here, in the works showing kind of our <laughs> little bit of, of work, um, along those lines for, getting our uh, bins filled. Just one bin so far, but my, I'm really, really hoping that we'll get to the point where we have at least two, um, because I, as I've said in a different video, if we can get two of those bins full and ready to go, then that will put us at the same um, gardening space that we had last year, um, not counting the green stalks. And so, but anyway, this is the um, beautiful, uh, I don't know, seed haul that we have so far. We do have some seeds from last year that are not present here. And I'm hopeful that we have success with, I mean, obviously with all of them, I'd love to have success. But if we have success with, you know, a majority of them, that will be fantastic. And I'm looking forward to the next video. You know, well, we'll I don't know exactly the order that it'll be, but I need to get things going for the seed starting. Because according to the Farmer's Almanac, a lot of the things that need to be seed started should have been done at the end of January and going into February. And we are at March 5th right now. So behind for sure, uh, but that's okay. I am not gonna stress about it. Uh, we have had, I think, a, an unexpectedly very cold um, winter. So I'm giving myself time to make sure I do it right because my previous seed sowing from, um, seed starting from fall didn't go great. I did do direct, seeds um, for some stuff, but I also tried to do seed starting and it, would, it didn't go well. So this time I do have a seed, you know, some grow lights and we've set up a little place here in the house for the seeds to, to start their growing adventure and hopefully um, being a little bit more um, intentional and reading up on processes will give us a, a good start and then the actual starting seeds <laughs> will be more successful and I won't be as disappointed in my abilities. But we'll see. Um, I have definitely babbled on long enough and so I want to thank you uh, for riding along as I go over what we're looking to put into the garden and I'd love to get your opinions on you know things that um, I've shown you if you have experience with them any tips or tricks that you can recommend to um, hopefully increase our um, success with this process 
ideas on things that we might want to put into the garden that we haven't mentioned are absolutely welcome. And yeah, I'm very excited to get started. So um, I hope you have a great morning, evening, you know, day, wherever, whenever you are. And until next time, take care of yourself. Thank you.